All right, let's go to the third game. Here we have it by Mario Jovara. And Mario, you were playing with the white pieces and you play the English. And here <clears throat> you go G3, which is possible, but I don't think it's good. You should go D4 here. This more or less has to be played, I think, D4. And you transpose, of course, into a variation which is highly theoretical, um, which can also rise after 1d4. The problem with g3 is that here and the moves after, black can always go d4 and he's just very comfortable. He gains a tempo and it's kind of a reverse Benoni. So don't give your opponent this kind of chance early in the game to, to already, I guess, get into a comfortable position and get a space advantage. This is not, not necessary. Your opponent doesn't take it, but, um, well, you cannot count on that, obviously. So again and again and again, your opponent could go d4. He should go d4 yourself to stop d4 from black. And this is actually, I think, a variation from the Catalan, which is harmless for black, I think. Um, but at least you're not worse because I think if if black goes d4 here you're you're already uh, fighting for equality <clears throat> all right your opponent just doesn't want to go d4 he doesn't want to enter those structures so now you're taking d5 yourself and you go d4 yourself that's good bishop e6 takes on c5 bishop takes c5 and now you go bishop g5 well in general this position doesn't give that much to white, unfortunately. I think maybe instead of bishop g5, you could try knight a4, let's say bishop e7, and go bishop e3 to play knight c5. I would think that b6 is pretty logical to stop that, and now rook c1, rook c8, knight d4. I mean, your only advantage is that your pawn structure is slightly better as black has this isolated pawn on d5, but it's not that much still just slightly preferable I would say the problem with bishop g5 is that as it turns out in the game you just give up your bishop and you don't get that much in return here now you go e4 which is possible um, but yeah it just doesn't give any advantage for white I mean after e4 black can just take on e4 knight takes queen e7 and Black is just comfortably equalized here, completely. Okay, I mean, it's just you have absolutely nothing here. Um, so if you play this, this bishop g5, bishop takes f6, you have two alternatives here to try something. One is to go knight e1, knight d3, but I also really don't believe in that. And then you can take on d5. Now queen takes b2, knight c7, rook d8. <coughs> Queen c1, trading queens, or rook 8 takes c1, and now you take the bishop pair away from black again, and you can play this position, but I don't, I also don't think it's much. Because, okay, the black pawn structure is a little bit worse, and his king is more open than your king, but on the other hand, he has the potential remote pass pawn. Um, on the queen side, so this should balance each other out and should be about equal. But here, maybe you can still try something. I don't know. Probably before play, instead of playing bishop g5, you should play something else, or you could try this knight e1 here. But after e4, I mean, if black wanted to, you could just take on e4 and just equalize completely. He didn't want to. He played d4, knight d5, queen d8. Now you go knight f4. Yeah, maybe rook c1. I like your knight on d5. Why not keep it there? Rook c1, bishop b6. And now you gave knight d2 here. But I think knight d1 makes a lot of sense to transpose the knight to d3. Transpose, um, not transpose, move <laughs> the knight to d3 regroup it mm. knight e5 for example knight e3 takes takes 
and here okay position is about equal but um, okay still some moves to be played from both sides and some mistakes maybe to be made knight f4 i mean it doesn't really change that much uh, in the evaluation of the position but just feels like to me knight e1 leads to a position which is slightly more comfortable to play for white whereas here i'm not sure just equal i guess rook c8 rook e1 knight a5 okay now you go um now you go knight fe5 which is possible yeah but why not maybe rook c1 yeah it's also also a very natural move here bishop b3 queen e2 okay and okay it's just a different position well what you did was also fine but also doesn't give any anything this should be free queen f3 queen e7 rook ac1 okay and now you did this this whole combination here of knight e7 which first looks like you're winning material but unfortunately black mm, can defend because he has this queen a5 double attack <clears throat> so mm, rook d1 Queen takes c7, queen takes b3, rook d8. Okay, now you played rook d3. You can play rook d3. I mean, the position is, is equal nonetheless, but queen d3 looks like it looks more natural, right? Just put a queen on here. The queen defends the pawn on e4, um, and then you can play rook d2, rook c2 to gain control of the c file. Black probably will play something like g5 to stop you from going f4 and to put his queen on e5. Rook d2, queen e5, rook c2, rook e8, okay, you can play f3. And here it seems like both sides really cannot do much. Both queens are quite well placed, and um, this should just result in a draw pretty much. Not much to be done here. Okay, also after rook d3, your position remains equal, but just this looks a little bit less natural, right? Uh, your queen is less well placed on d1 than on d3. Queen b5, b4, queen c4, king g2, king f8, queen d2, king e7, queen d1. So you're just waiting here, a5. Okay, this is all fine. Takes, takes, queen d2, queen a4, queen b2, king f8. But here you could have really simplified the task by playing queen b6, mm, attacking the rook. And well, if black goes queen c2, just king h3. Cannot take because of checkmate. And queen c8, you just go back. And well, I think black pretty much has to take perpetual here because otherwise you'll win the pawn on d4. So this was a straightforward way to, to equalize. I mean, you are, the position is about equal anyway, but if anybody's pressing, it's black. So you want to force matter, see if you can. And this was one way to do it. Black really also doesn't have a good alternative choice here besides queen c2. You gave yourself king e7 here, but yeah, just check. I mean, this, this can't be right with the king on e8. Now your queen is well placed suddenly and um, black might be worse. So. Queen b6. This was a 40th move, so maybe you were short on time. Mm, I'm not sure what happened here, but queen b6 definitely moved to, to consider, and probably you did consider it, um, but for some reason you didn't play it. Maybe you were too afraid of this check on c2. I don't know, but this is clearly just calculation. And king h1 also, I mean, the king is, is worse on h1 than on g2. I would say g2 seems to me to be the best square for the king where it can escape easily to h3 if necessary. <clears throat> so king h1, queen c4. Mm. Now you play queen b1. 
Maybe it's more precise to go queen b6 first, hitting the rook, forcing some kind of king e8 or king e7, and then going back because now you um, put the black king on a more exposed square. I mean, this is just a de detail, but it can make a difference later on. Also, I think that going to b1, it's not the best setup. I think the best setup is to go to d2 with the queen to cover the second rank and then to go king g2 again. Let's say king g8, king g2. And okay, now you can just pretty much um, play the king to h3 or g2 and just wait and see what black comes up with. Because the only thing you have to watch out for here is that black somehow activates this rook along the b-file and then creates some kind of mating attack. Right? And whenever black moves the rook to b7 or wherever, you want to be able to just take on d4 and uh, without running into any uh, problems. So that's what you need to watch out for and uh, this is actually what happens in the game. Uh, here, queen d1, okay, again, king g2, I would say, and queen d2, again going into the setup. But you're keeping your king on h1, which is a bad square uh, to begin with because if your queen... Um, is not on the first rank. You cannot even move the rook because of checkmate. And um, <clears throat> black just improves his position, whereas you are not improving your position. So, yeah, it gets pretty difficult now. Um, you play g4 now. Yeah, already here, I think if you go king g2 and then rook b8, it's, it's very unpleasant. The rook coming to b2 or b1 and suddenly black is exerting a lot of pressure. Um, so, yeah, maybe you should play something like a4 here to not allow black to go a4. But this, is, this whole setup is already sub suboptimal it might hold but this is very uncomfortable it feels like to me you're not getting into your perfect setup anymore like i said earlier where you have the queen on d2 the king on g2 of course it didn't need to come that far anyway right because you made some inaccuracies uh, earlier and didn't take the chance with queen b6 to to force uh, matters uh, now you have to sit and wait and and defend which is not an easy task even though a position might be still okay not easy your king is, is less safe that's the main problem here g4 king g7 queen d2 yeah now rook b8 exactly that's what we were talking about black is ready to bring his rook into action and um your position just collapses pretty quickly here rook b2 Big six, king g1, queen c3. <coughs> but here you could still defend. You, you, you have to defend as hard as you can till the very end. Now you play king f1 and um, then it's really not much to do. You could have played king f2 instead. All right, let's say king f6. Okay, well, this also looks pretty bad, but it feels like to me this is this was a better chance. Even though I'm also kind of struggling right now to see what you can do here next. Yeah, honestly, this also looks pretty bad just the queen is so well placed on c3 supporting the pawn and your position um, is having those holes where the king can enter so yeah this i mean either way probably pretty bad yeah now f4 is accelerating the end probably should go something like king f2 but it's going to be very difficult defense in either case And here, yeah, this is just game over, unfortunately. 
now black forced the, the trade of queens and that's it yeah nothing to do here yeah very unfortunate you lost this game in the end um i think what it came down to and this has happened to me many times you reach this equal position uh, with the rook and queen against rook and queen and you know it's a draw it's equal um you maybe still hope to do something and then you play some imprecise moves and suddenly you end up in still an equal position but it's a little bit less comfortable for you than for your opponent and now you have to be precise uh, at some point and this is where it went wrong for you here you had a lot of opportunities to play a little bit better but you made a number of inaccuracies um, slowly your position became worse and worse until suddenly there was this point of no return and your opponent uh, was able to bring his rook over the b-file and that was it um, so let me see in general okay it started out not so well with the opening you didn't get any advantage in uh, um, even worse you could have been you could have been already in a little bit of trouble i feel like if your opponent goes for d4 so you definitely want to check this opening again um, and spend some time looking at that and what you need to do there so 3d4 in this particular position would be the best choice otherwise don't play two knight c3 if you play knight c3 you cannot allow black to go d5 d4 um, that being said then the position was about equal and i think you played played quite decently and we reached this constellation like i said queen and rook against queen and rook and there you chose this little unnatural setup at least to my eyes to put the rook on d3 and the queen on d1 and i think this was maybe the root for your later problems because you lost some time there and you allowed black to get his queen to an active square on c4 so this made it um, definitely more uncomfortable for you than need to be and then when it came down to defense definitely the 40th move was was a very important one because there you had an option to just um, equalize fully immediately but you didn't take it so these moments are always very important because usually we we get them at some point we just have to be aware and uh, be on the lookout for those tactical um, shots or ideas to to alleviate the tension and you miss that and then i mean you need to be passive anyway it probably holds if you put your queen on d2 and your king on g2 and you don't move anything really <laughs> which of course is not allowed in chess um, but you just move your king from g2 to h3 something like that but black can still try i mean it's going to be going to be hard anyway but uh, the way you played it allowed black unfortunately to then activate his rook and um, go after your king that was the beginning of the end all right mario i hope that was helpful we have one more game of you so i'll get to that right now